Hey there, guys and gals. This is Reverend Benjamin Blankenship, and you are listening to another exciting episode of Firebrand Podcast. Here tonight, uh, we're in full on video mode, and I am glad to have with me author Mike Dern. This is a man who wrote the book on Christian horror, asking the question of is the Christian mindset and horror compatible together? Beyond that, he's written a lot of fiction books as well. This guy knows his stuff. Um, I don't know if you have more books down than, than me or not. I'm, I'm on my 17th, but I've written like theological books under one name and I've written like fiction under another name. So, so that's that's where I'm at. My, my first book was Thank God for Women Preachers. I've got uh, Mentality to Lead is the other ministerial one. Um, uh, well done, growing in the things of God. All the other ones are in like the horror realm under another name. Awful, terrible stuff that these listeners probably should never read. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you uh, know, you, you've got me. You've got me beat. I have. I just published my twelfth, and it's a combination, you know, nonfiction and fiction. So um, I'm not sure what the breakdown is, but I'm at twelve. So you got. But me. I will. I will tell you that yours is awesome. That I had read the. Christian horror book because I, I thought that that was intriguing. Um, it's you know I grew up watching Jaws and the Birds and and all this other stuff and and you you find certain church folks that they are like hell bent against anything horror which which you know goes all over the place. It goes from Scooby Doo to like X rated uh, t type stuff. So, so I mean it, it's it's a sliding scale kind of like when people say this is a Christian song and you and you know you can say well theologically is it or, right. or or isn't it um but here recently then and, and a re big reason that caused me to want to have you on <clears throat> i went to see this movie nefarious uh made by some notable people they made god's not dead and, and several other movies and right. i feel like the movie's absolutely brilliant and it is it was put out as horror you know to draw a horror audience and it's also christian um an atheist goes to interview this man that says that he's de demonized by this demon that basically his name is nefarious and um they have this big conversation dialogue you've got some psychological things that go on lights flashing what have you um through the movie the demon talks about eden and the carpenter and all that things that are theologically sound and how things work that, that i would say as a preacher theologian what have you that i would say that it's solid stuff going on there it was a really good script it was good acting it was good videography a catholic priest was there praying over the place because when they were shooting certain scenes where the demon was like manifesting in the scenes you know that the, the actor was playing that the wind would go blowing so hard uh, that, that I mean, that they had to call cut, that all kinds of things were going on. And this Catholic priest that talked about that, who has a YouTube channel, he's he's an exorcist, like a real life one. Um, he said, you know, when Satan gets up out of his chair and tries to stop something that you're doing, you must be doing it right. At the same time, there, there's a lot of people that have said they absolutely love this movie, but a few people reviewing it have said, I, I don't even know how to how to put this together, a uh, Christian and horror. I'm going to let you talk. You go ahead. Tell us, how can you put that together? Something being Christian and horror at the same time. Well, I mean, the Bible would be the good, a good place to start. You know, the, uh, the scripture is just filled with dark content and dark subject matter. And in fact, I think it is the Horror Writers Association, HWA, when they in on their about page when they describe like what is horror they list the bible as one of the most preeminent examples of the horror genre and so and they talk about you know the things like uh, the devil uh, fallen angels armageddon uh, sodom and gomorrah uh, demons the casting out of demons by by christ uh, so there's just a wealth of content in the scripture that would at least justify the uh, presence of dark subject matter within our storytelling. God's telling his story, and it's in the context of a lot, a heck of a lot of evil and violence and grotesquerie. So that would be my ba basic point is that 
uh, truth is not limited to just the, the clean and the pure. Sometimes the truth is found in the dark places too. So uh, I just see there's no, and I, I attend a very conservative uh, evangelical church. And I have had, you know, run-ins with the lead. It's a mega church. And, you know, I've tried to start like, for instance, some ministries there uh, for artists and Christian artists. And when <clears throat> my leadership, uh, the leadership, uh, you know, learned that I write books like Christian horror and that I write horror books and that I create art that contains things like skulls or maybe uh, certain types of symbolism, that that is, um, they are from the school that believes that Christians should be Thomas Kincaid knockoffs on everything. We should, you know, we should be painters of light and songs should be uplifting and encouraging and our work should be hopeful in this. And I'm not disputing that at all. A Christian without hope is an oxymoron, but we also need to be soldiers in, in a battle of, of darkness, you know. I, I really, being a graphic artist, of, of course, I love art, and I've really liked Rembrandt, and it's because he has such contrast. The Bible says that God calls us out of darkness into marvelous light, and, you know, when you look at sci-fi things like C.S. Lewis and and uh, mm -hmm. Professor J.R.R. Tolkien, I mean, they have that. They have the Witch King. Um, you, you know, you have, uh, what is it, The Pilgrim's Regress by C.S. Lewis. I liked that better than The Pilgrim's Progress, personally, um, but uh, at the towards the end of it, there's a witch. And she's giving people a drink from this cup and they've got these like things growing out of them. And it's a temptation of sin and, and, and what have you. And so all of that's going on. Um, I totally believe that Christian horror uh, is is a thing. Um, I think that it exists largely within um, uh, demoniac type movies. You, you know, they a lot of times those get Hollywooded up. But, you know, there's an exorcism or some type of thing in them typically. Uh, it's a good versus evil and good wins. Um, or then you've got the apocalyptic. I believe you even talked about that, like all the left behind, you know, type yep. stuff about the rapture, because that would be absolutely terrifying to be separated from uh, from God. Um, as a little boy, and, and I'm I'm a big believer. In fact, I had a shirt with it printed on it. I had Jude 23, like printed like a basketball jersey, because uh -huh. the Bible says that some saved by fear pulling them from the fire. I think about how many people have got saved by a chick track, how many people have got saved by the play Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames, or by a judgment house in church, by the you're going to die and burn in the everlasting fires of hell if you don't repent. And that they, you know, people, I've been in church, like, I mean, I'm, I'm old school, uh, where they just like run screaming to the altar, you know, and genuinely get saved. And if that's what it takes for somebody to get saved, or if that's what it takes to reach somebody, I mean, I I think have at it. Um, you certainly can do it well or or not. What what are your what are your thoughts uh, about that? You know, to these people that that look at it and that don't understand because maybe it's not their thing, but maybe also it'll reach somebody that they never could. You know, I, I in my book, um, I use the example of. Christopher Hitchens was the famed, you know, atheist. He's now he's now passed away, but his brother Peter was, uh, I think he was like a lapsed Catholic or something, but he'd pretty much fallen away from God completely. And I tell the story of uh, how God used a painting, and I forget the exact name of it. It's like The Judgment of God by, and I won't pronounce this name right, Roger Van Der Weyden or something. But it's like a trip type, like a three panel, yeah. huge altarpiece painting. And so Peter Hitchens uh, went to, I guess, to have a viewing of this. And he said he was absolutely horrified because the picture is obviously Christ seated on the throne. And I believe there's some saints and angels around him and the glory of uh, heaven. But then along the bottom of the painting, is a parade of horrified, grotesque individuals who are running in fear from the holy God. And if you actually zoom in and look at the faces, it's like a carnival of, of, of terror. Faces contorted, people falling, stumbling over each other. 
they're in absolute fear of God. And Pete and Peter Hitchens said that once he saw that and he realized that that he was in that parade, you know, he was in that crowd, that if he were to die that night, that he would go to hell. He would stand on the opposite side of judgment, uh, of the judgment of God. And he was more or less uh, scared into the kingdom. And, you know, when you mentioned that uh, as well, I was thinking J Jesus did that often with his with his parables and his teachings. You woe unto you. And then uh, he would, like, for instance, the parable of the, the rich man and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. I always use that as an example of a Christian story. Obviously, Christ our Lord said it, so it's a Christian story, but it doesn't end good. It doesn't end with bells and whistles and butterflies and puppies. You know, it ends, the story of the rich man and Lazarus ends with the rich man in torment crying out for mercy for a drop of water and begging the Lord to send someone back to earth to warn his brothers about this place yeah. and and the the you know and christ just says more or less you know that that was his fate his fate was done and if someone even rose from the dead that uh, you know those brothers would not <laughs> turn from their uh, disbelief so and it was given a dynamic because he actually it's the only parable where he named a guy and he said this beggar lazarus and put a name on it and he even emphasized a certain rich man you know you know there, there's certain rich people that we know i mean you would know if i was talking about bill gates or elon musk or whatever you know a certain person that does this kind of kind of thing so i mean it it was something that the crowd there that it had more identity to and, he, and jesus did preach twice as much literally twice as much on hell as he did on heaven um, I, I think it's interesting how historically how Judas Iscariot, when he hung himself, and everybody knew that, that Judas went to hell, even though you've got people that contest that. That's why Matthias' lots were drawn and, because somebody had to take his place because he's, he's burning in hell. His body, when it, when it fell off of that rope where he hung himself, he literally rolled down the hill into Gehenna, the, the, play, the, 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 junk, the place that was emblematic of hell, you know, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that God, um, you know, what did the Apostle Paul say? And I'm not sure the exact quote, but he talks about uh, because of the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. <laughs> and I love that phrase, the terror of the Lord. We want to think about uh, the goodness of God definitely leads people to repentance. But there's also this aspect where the terror of the Lord can strike us in such a way that it motivates us towards repentance and to eliminate that to eliminate the terror of the lord from the gospel equation just seems like a terrible uh you know you know problem it, and not it, that it, we need to go around scaring people but that but that the consequences of our of our indecision or lack of faith or unrepentance is a terrible terrible thing the the, the fear of the lord is a really complex subject it's one of the uh seven uh, attributes of the holy spirit that we read about in the bible the seven spirits of god i'm actually writing a book on it right now but it's kind of a triune thing where it means both awe and reverence and an actual absolute trembling fear you know god wanted to talk to the the uh, children of israel the goshenites at that time and he appeared to them in, in like fire and, and smoke and the smoke was just hiding his glory and they said that we've seen to moses we've seen the lord and he's an all-consuming fire and you know we're, we're gonna die if we're around him anymore we're so afraid um yes. that we just want for you to represent and and talk to them so i mean they had an experience with god but they didn't have a relationship and you get that because moses goes up on the mountain and they've they've made a golden calf uh when, when he comes down so um you know there, there's people that'll say hey the lord appeared to me and you know, I just finished my sandwich. You know, that's never really the way that it's actually happened for anyone that even an angel has appeared to. I mean, they throw themselves down to the ground and, and, you know, I mean, there's there's some some something there. It's not just this this solemn, 
you know, thing. I mean, it, it'll have you screaming and shouting and praying. I would love that for God just to show up. I, personally, me, I would love that for God just to show up like a like a billowing, shaking the room. Like, and and I wrote in the book, and and I had several people like proofread it. I said like the smoke monster and lost, but with fire and with a voice that sounded like many waters that would just shake the wall. I mean, that's that's what it's like when God shows up. But but people don't get that um, because I don't think that they're really that visual. When the Passion of Christ came out by Mel Gibson, it's like I didn't know it was that bad. It was worse. It was, it absolutely was. Uh, uh, though he did it justice, and I wish that somebody would do that with Hell. I had such high expectations for Sam Raimi's um, drag you drag me to Hell. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought this is going to be a chick track. You know, this is going to be a repent, turn or burn thing. And the opening scene was absolutely amazing and then the movie died and then they you know had a, a scene that was similar to the beginning there at the end but they, they made it a horror comedy and it's scott, like go ahead i believe scott it wasn't scott derrickson uh you know the guy who directed uh, exorcism of emily rose and uh you know, dr strange the first dr strange but i believe scott derrickson for a long time was was toying with doing a, a uh a cinematic adaptation of Dante's Inferno, but I, I believe it since fell through. But you're right; that stuff would be would be interesting to see. It would be glorious. I mean, it would it would be absolutely fantastic. Bob Larson said that, in, in you know, he's done more exorcisms than anybody else living today. I've, I've loved him ever since I've been a teenager. I went when because you know he's interviewing like Anton LaVey's family and and, and people. He's he's awesome. Um, uh, but Bob Larson, he was down at this like movie uh, place and there was this guy that only wrote horror and he said, can you tell me what evil looks like? And it's weird that, that, you know, that you write all this stuff, but you don't know what real evil is. It's, you know, it's a perversion of good. And I mean, I think that as a Christian and, and you get this, that if you don't know the goodness of God and what that is, that you can't understand what real evil is, that, hey, I want the same results, but I want it in the wrong way which if I have to spell it out, it's not going to get you the same results. You know, um, I'm not going to get to California by driving on 75 North. That would make no sense. I, I had uh, mentioned, I think, believe I mentioned this in, my, in the book, Christian Horror as well, but there's certain key uh, stories or um, uh, things that happen in the Bible that we don't put under the horror category, but they really are. And one of them is the fall of man. Oh, yeah. the, fall of man the fall of man may be the most singularly horrific event outside of the crucifixion of Christ. Yeah. In all of scripture, the fact that a, a being created in the very image of God would turn uh, his back on the one who created them, that is the pinnacle of, of horror. I mean, the the absolute terror, the fact that we can't even comprehend that, that that's just a passing concept, that we are born into sin and that we are, you know, uh, children of, of uh, the devil. We're children of wrath, it says in Ephesians, and we don't get that. But I believe in God's eyes that uh, that, that is just such a terrible, that the fall of man may be the, the greatest uh, atrocity in all of scripture, apart from again, the, the oh, yeah. holy God, you know, well, well, through there in Genesis, I mean, the, the Noah's Noah's flood, that the sons of God, that fallen angels looked upon the women and they were fair, and there were there were giants in the land, which I actually wrote a story ab about that under the under my fiction thing. Um, it's uh, it's in like the last anthology that I wrote as as bonus content, but I mean, I've I've got like Nephilim eating people. And, uh, and, and, and all sorts of stuff, you know, um, you read the Bible, there's no such thing as a, as a good giant. We've got about eight more minutes. Go ahead and wrap it up. Well, I would, uh, for, for me, um, horror is one of those genres. I believe the Christians need to, uh, dive in and I'll just say redeem it. In other words, there's a lot of bad horror, just like there's a lot of bad storytelling, but Christians have been so averse to this genre and it's, pretty much knee-jerk, apologetic. Um, I don't believe there's a lot of thoughtful treatment of the subject. We want to just say, well, that has too much gore or this has, uh, you know. So does the crucifixion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or it has occult elements, therefore we can't see this. You know, even William Peter Blatty, who wrote the 
Exorcist uh, saw that as a fundamentally Christian film, and the message was fundamentally Christian. And at the heart of uh, a lot of our worldviews, there is um, the, the terror of the Lord and the terror of atheistic non-existence, let's say. In other words, like Lovecraft, who is one of the premier horror icons. Well, the horror uh, of Lovecraft was in a cold cosmic universe that was devoid of God. In other words, for, um, for, for uh, Lovecraft, you know, science was just, science was a useless tool by useless men who were just going to die under the cold eye of, uh, you know, Cthulhu and the, and, and the Lovecraftian bestiary because we're all going into the void. And so there's a stark contrast between a universe that exists where with God at its center and a universe where there is no, uh, no, no judgment, no being watching out for us, steering the universe. There's no moral uh, absolutism and we just live and we die. There is a great terror to Lovecraftian uh, atheists, uh, a universe of Lovecraftian atheism, but there's an equal terror to a universe in which a holy God, you know, will judge the souls of men. And I believe that kind of a worldview, you know, and, and most horror does appeal to a, a, a moral universe with a God or some kind of absolute uh, goodness, good and evil. You know, most horror appeals to that. But I believe as Christians, we need to, you know, be back to taking these kind of, uh, you know, storytelling uh, venues and genres and redeeming them and bringing, you know, taking out the Lovecraftian atheism, let's say, and, and bringing the fear of the Lord, the terror of the Lord into our storytelling. But let's appeal to a universe where there are absolute morals and where there is a divine, good divine creator who loves us, but will judge us rightly too. You know? So I just, uh, I encourage Christians to let's plumb these genres. Why do we, you know, let's not just cast them off and say, well, horror is no good check. We won't do that. You know, maybe it's a genre that we need to recapture and redeem absolutely yeah i had um i had talked to to some um some movie maker guy I, you know a, a friend of mine that's in gospel music and he, he knew i'd wrote the horror stuff he's like hey man he's like you could write this horror thing for this guy and it was something goofy and i said if i was going to sit down and write you know i mean it, it's let's add one more thing to my plate and write something for this movie maker i said i would want it to lead people to jesus christ and and I I told him I said right here I said let me let me spell it out to you let me lay it out to you what I would do I I would full on chick track that thing and and if you if you want to write the screenplay and just say special thanks to B L Blankenship that's my horror name uh, good Christian readers that don't want something that's that's like NC seventeen type book I, minus the language do not buy my books <laughs> um, but but I said. If you had a bunch of young people, they're up partying, you know, they're they're kind of fornicating, drinking, you know, whatever. They're they're being a bunch of rebellious kids, don't know the Lord. And uh, you know, of course, you'd have a killjoy, you know, Christian, you know, boy that would be in it that would kind of be the light to to one of them. And you have somebody dying a drunk driving accident. I said, you know, you can have them die and they can go to hell. Why? Because they're lost. Uh, and it's something that happens every day. People die lost and they go to hell because they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I said, I would flip back and forth between the scenes. I would have what's happening in the natural with the, with the paramedics showing up and whatnot. And I would have like the demonic and he's getting up and seeing his body and thinking, where am I? And you could have this girl tormented by it, have him kind of appearing like they did in Nightmare on Elm Street where he's in the corner and, you know, it's, it's like I'm in hell is written on the wall. And um, she gives her life to the Lord at the end of it so she doesn't have to be in that place, go through the funeral, go through the whole nine yards. I said, that's what I would go ahead and do. And then she could have such a peace about that, that everybody when they die, that they don't go to heaven, but that there is redemption for that because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So you don't have to burn. He's, he's, he's calling you home. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that that would be great to have things out there like that. I, I think it's great to have things that, that are just real 
and everything. Um, not necessarily like Sunday schooly, you know. I mean, that's that what I just named is immediately PG thirteen, you know, what which you wouldn't probably want it to go to R because then they lose money, you know. <laughs> as many people don't see R rated movies. I mean, like in real life, as yeah. if it's PG thirteen. But I mean, just due to the graphic nature of what would be happening, that would be PG thirteen. Where can people get your books? Tell them where to check you out. Uh, I'm uh, Amazon exclusive uh, mainly. My first two books are were a general market, but um, uh, most of my books, if you just look up uh, Mike Duran in uh, an Amazon or my webpage, MikeDuran.com, and you'll have I have links to my art and links to my books and writing, and so um, yeah, I'm out there. Just Google my name, and you'll find hey, <laughs> you'll find my and, stuff. And, and I'll put your name and all that in in the information below i just will not be naming my books because again they're <laughs> they're horrible when i started i thought i'm not going to be the best writer i'm not going to be the worst writer but if it's just so obscenely violent that guinness records would call me up so that's it, it you know it's in that category it's yeah it's terrible yeah. stuff <laughs> thank you so much for coming on and i hope that this is ministered to someone that it's blessed them because that's really what what our hearts about i mean you know you're there a guy that wants to do ministry in the church i've, I've been there pastoring i've did all kinds of ministry stuff i evangelize it's you know i've got a podcast that you're watching right now all all that sort of stuff so i mean it's absolutely about jesus and that's the heartbeat of it all god bless you man thank you so much all right thank you